Um, this is the fifth meeting, fifth public meeting. Um, main focus today will be the white paper. Um, I don't think we need to do an int introduction. Uh, I think we've done that already. I'm glad that we uh, that you're all here. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, I hope it's going to be a good and productive meeting. And yeah, let's go. I hope you're well rested after an Acapulco. <laughs> Oh yes, uh, an Arcapulco was great. Yeah, um, great you look really well rested. Yeah, uh, I'm not that well rested because it was it was a lot. Uh, the week was heavy. Um, a lot of cool people there. A lot of interesting conversations. Um, a lot of networking. I was really glad uh, in the evening that I that I just could you know relax uh, and uh, yeah rethink everything because a lot of interesting cool people there. Um, I talked about the our project annex a lot. Um, the feedback, the overall feedback that I got was uh, very positive, I would say. Um, and yeah, it's, it's uh, still, in my opinion, a really good project, really interesting. Uh, I think we can do quite, uh, quite, some, quite a lot of good here. Um, yeah. That's great to hear. Yeah, well, I've had the same experience. Like, um, let's say nine out of 10 are uh, like positive feedbacks that I've gotten from the idea and from the project. So it's pretty encouraging. Uh, actually, I've had such feedback like when are we going to start and uh, what are our kids like and uh, some like please tell me some details from everybody. Uh, but I've said that just follow our uh, telegram and join our meetings. <laughs> Yeah, that's the same thing I've been telling everybody. Like I've, I've been always uh, mentioning that we are in the very beginning and, and we're still in the community building phase. And uh, we just started to build our product. So yeah, uh, we, we don't really have specifics yet. Yes, this is a work in progress um, and we'll advance with the community together. Um, and yes, it will take time, definitely. It's, it's not an easy problem. It's, it's, it's hard, it's difficult. Um, but I'm very positive. I think uh, working with you all so far has been a lot of fun uh, and very, very productive. Um, so, yeah, I'm all for it. Great. So let's get to the topic of the day. I, I was thinking we could uh, discuss the white paper and, and maybe a little bit about the uh, development side with Alexia and Tom. Uh, what have you guys been up to? But mostly I wanted to touch on the and, and to start the work actually on the on the white white paper and maybe maybe we could make some kind of a division of labor already now so everybody could start working on it whenever they have some spare time well, that, that was the idea for the agenda today yeah I think that's good um... Talking over the overall structure, um, what parts we want to put in the white paper, um, and then, as you said, division of labor. I think we should hand out uh, tasks uh, so that everyone can can focus on one specific thing. Um, and of course, as we are with, as with everything else, uh, give feedback, uh, support each other, um, and work on this together. Um, that's pretty much it. Yeah, I, I assume that uh, we're going to use Google Google Docs for the like open Google Docs like have, we have been so far, but because it's easy to access for everybody from any device and uh, everybody can edit it freely and comment it freely. So I think that will be the if everybody's okay with that. I, I would like to use it. Google Docs are cool Not for everybody actually. Yeah, it's a good way to collaborate yeah agreed so uh, I can I can um, I will make the file and I will distribute the um, rights to to use it so if everybody could just drop their preferred email of their Google accounts to me with a private message that would be great so then I could. Uh, I think we're going to start a new document. We have an old one, but uh, I think m at this point it's better to start from scratch and rather just uh, copy the stuff from the old one to the new one. Uh, are you talking about just the, the Word document uh, or the entire Google folder? Sorry, what's that? 
Uh, are you talking about just doing a completely new uh, document or uh, doing an entirely new folder on Google Drive? You're muted. Oh, sorry, I was muted. I think we can use the same folder and, and let's just make a new file and, and uh, name it white paper 1.0 or something, something like that. And then we can use the resources we have on that folder uh, to populate them. And of course, everybody has a, has a chance to check on the, well, our previous work and, and take any ideas and you know, like copy paste basically. There's a lot of, lot of uh, like legal stuff and, and we've been working on this for half a year. And, and last end of last year, we actually worked quite a bit on the, on the white paper, but uh, then we stopped because we, we took a, different, a little bit different direction, direction. So there's a lot of editing for sure. Yeah, but, but I think a lot of the stuff is still usable, so <clears throat> definitely worth to check it out. Yeah. yeah, the main idea is the same, um, and yeah, we can uh, definitely use the content that we already created. Right. New document in the folder, um, it'll have permissions for everyone who wants to join anyhow. The, the biggest new thing is the technical side, which we didn't have expertise for yet, so that's what I want to mainly talk about so that that uh, would fall fall for Alex and Tom I think uh, if you guys are okay with it maybe you can work on it as a team or maybe you can divide it somehow like <clears throat> based on your preferences what do you guys think yeah actually um, uh, as a team lead I would like to comment that uh, we are currently two people of course we'll divide our responsibilities uh, but um, this, uh, the first thing to note from our perspective is probably that we would like to hear what you guys have planned. So we kind of just execute your plans in code. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we wish to have more members uh, in the technical side to join the team in the future. But uh, what we can uh, work on now we start uh, uh, as soon as possible, uh, immediately if possible. And uh, we'll, first we have to make an outline, like for the technical side, like what will need to be done. So we'll make a, a, a roadmap and uh, yeah. a, a possible timeline as soon as we can. Yeah, I think we're gonna need some sort of backlog tool of tasks. Yeah, I mean, we can, I didn't. We can uh, make a task list, and then we can make a project uh, project uh, roadmap, a project plan out of it. But well, we need to first know what we have to do. Yeah. Um, okay, a couple things. Um, so for, for the task list, we're using Trello, uh, which is this, uh, this cloud service um, where everyone can um, organize tasks and uh, yeah, um, see the progress yeah, no. uh, of each thing. Uh, if you don't have access to that yet, uh, we'll put a link in it again in the group uh, so that you can join okay. the board. Um, and then, then we need more developers, that's absolutely true. Um, but getting developers is hard. <laughs> They're a rare breed and, and we have to yeah. convince them of the project. Um, so they want to join. Actually, um, there were definitely I think it's more, there. Max, Max mm -hmm. I think it's more about hyping also on the developer side, just like uh, when talking to investors, talking to developers is somehow the same thing. They need to know what is going on. Of course, we are, we are two people, we can do something, but you know, as the project becomes more known in the community, then other people also want to join. Absolutely, yes. Um, and, and that's the thing, talking to developers, um, talking to a network and uh, yeah, talking about the project, I think that's the best way to, to, to move this forward. Um, and if you guys know anyone uh, who can develop, um, yeah, gladly invite them. Um, I've met several developers at Arc, uh, Acapulco. Um, unfortunately, most of them already uh, are full-time employed somewhere. Um, but uh, 
yeah, they're definitely interested in uh, checking the project out as it moves forward. Um, and we'll see where that goes. Okay, um, and then to the, uh, the the issue of what should the token do? Um, initially, uh, it's it's only supposed to be the equity representation um, or the representation of the equity stake in the project. Um, and I think the requirements for that are uh, rather simple. Um, it needs to be a token um, that is unique, um, divisible, uh, fungible, and uh, can be sent from one account to the other. Um, and that's pretty much it, uh, at least for the initial round. Um, it needs to be eligible to uh, issue dividends or, or to be issued dividends. Um, and uh, the interesting question is how we can actually do that. Um, so maybe let's talk about this first. Um, how would you guys implement the dividends from a technical point of view? Uh, okay, so there's this simple issue that we need to solve. If Alice uh, obtains a token paying with Ethereum and the token is eligible for uh, 20 uh, dividends. Now Alice gives the same token to Bob. Uh, now Bob uh, can also claim another 20 dividends unless there's some kind of mechanism to prevent that and that would be block time that's the most simple dividend uh, paying contract structure now what else uh, uh, should uh, the dividend paying uh, token do what other parameters should we have except uh, uh, paying uh, dividends a certain amount within a certain time frame yeah, so to the uh, to the issue with uh, receiving uh, or that the same token receives several um, times the, the, the dividends, um, I think the easiest way to work around this is to uh, issue the dividends on a regular schedule, maybe once a month, um, once a quarter or once a year, um, and then letting the market handle it. Um, so the uh, simply with any other uh, publicly traded bond, um, as soon as the or or stock for that matter, as soon as the dividend or uh, interest payment uh, is issued, um, the value of the token to, uh, of the stock or bond drops accordingly, um, and then over time it increases again uh, until the point of the uh, payment of the uh, of the payment, um, and that is a calculation of time preference and uh, something that the market handles quite well. Uh, so that if you sell the token 15 days before the um, payment, uh, you will have a token that is 15 uh, 50 per or appreciated exactly that amount. Um, uh, so that both the seller and the buyer have uh, a exact amount of, uh, of the dividend payment uh, that will come out. But again, this, this is something on the free market. Um, this, this is not a technical issue that will be solved on the free exchange. Uh, one more question. Will the token pay dividends on the total uh, value or appreciate the total value of all of our um, projects and mini ICOs and whatever we build or is it purely speculative as we publish it? Um, so do you mean that uh, does each token represent a specific plan, a specific power yeah. plan? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think the, the main issue with, with doing it that way uh, is that the tokens are no longer fungible. Um, so if you are a owner of, uh, of this one power plant, you have uh, the token has a different price and a different value uh, than the token of the other plant. Um, and especially, okay. uh, and this is especially okay. the, um, if you want to have a liquid token. Um, so I personally prefer the um, approach that the token represents the portfolio. Um, of each uh, of the entire um, amount of, of 
power plants. Uh, that makes it easier because uh, we can issue a portfolio token that represents the investment separately. And then another token later, maybe, if we want to, which is another um, uh, value proposition. Uh, for example, something to do with the power plant itself. Uh, for um, an investment portfolio, a fungible token uh, can be ERC20 uh, standard, uh, but for a non-fungible token, there is uh, um, ERC725 standard, which is great for uh, real estate or uh, a piece of property, piece of art or a power plant. Yeah, I think the approach here is is the portfolio approach. Like uh, an owner of the equ equity based token uh, will be the owner of of piece of NX network. So each power plant will represent a node in the NX network, and each each token represents a share in that network. And then maybe it makes sense to have a separate utility token for. Um, for those util utilitarian needs, but I'm not sure how that would play out. Something to think about, certainly. Is it is it is it like extremely difficult to have a have a security token that also functions as a utility? Uh, it's not extremely difficult, but you have to um, write an application that makes these different tokens communicate with each other. So uh, you have to have uh, a portfolio holder uh, that holds a basket of, of tokens. I, I think Polymath is trying to approach it uh, from this point of view. They have securities, a basket of securities, and then they have the uh, asset collection token for themselves. Uh, for the portfolio holders. But if we begin simple, we can uh, issue the portfolio token first and then work on individual assets after, and not the other way around. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense. I think that should be reflected in the, in the white paper as well, that what we are releasing now is the MVP, which is the, uh, the last meeting we concluded will be the, will be the, um, security token part and and like a, just a kickstarter for solar plants but basically so, and that we are in process of developing uh, furniture features that we can touch on lightly maybe on the on the white paper like on, on the concept level uh, without going into too much into technicalities because that probably will change within the next one or two years yeah and th there are different types of approaches for example ada cardano uh, it has um, a special wallet that it uses for a treasury, okay? So the treasury wallet is governed under a digital contract within the ADA network, the Cardano network. And it pays rewards uh, for developers who respond to bounties. So there are different types of approaches that are available in the community, but uh, I think that uh, our portfolio token should have, um, let's say, in, in simplicity, if we, if we just issue dividends on a portfolio, and then we go on the details, what should the portfolio contain, and what kind of contracts they fall under. And then after that, we work on the individual assets. Because we, we kind of, uh, the more we go into detail, uh, the later it should come in the development pipeline, you know. We should yes. work on the base first, you know. Yes, yes, I agree. Um, the only issue that I, I see with doing the portfolio approach um, is the uh, inflation um, 
that will be uh, uh, that, that will affect uh, the old holders that invested in a early funding round. Um, they will get inflated with the further uh, the second, third, and fourth uh, funding round. Um, simply because we will uh, issue new tokens um, at a probably higher value. Um, and the question is how we can work around this inflation and the loss of uh, voting power. Um, in the traditional markets, this has to be done with uh, stock options. Um, and the stock options themselves can be traded on the market. Um, and they, uh, number one, um, give the old token holders, uh, the or stockholders in this example, um, the possibility of buying up additional um, to uh, stocks uh, so that they can keep the same amount of voting power percentage-wise. Um, but also, uh, because the options have a value um, and they can be sold, bought and uh, sold on the pub uh, public and free market, um, this works as a um, compensation for the inflation uh, that occurs with the additional stocks. Um, how would this be possible in um, in the blockchain world? Um, is it uh, is this doable with a uh, second token that is initiated only for the uh, time that the uh, new funding round takes place? You are talking about an uh, individual asset class, so so it's another token that gives right to uh, an X amount of of tokens under set rules so we are talking about uh, essentially yes. another token so as an example um, if you own uh, two percent um, of all the tokens of the enex uh, project um, and we do a fundraising uh, that increases the, the uh, total amount raised or the the uh, total amount of tokens um, by 50 percent uh, so if we raise if we raised or we created 1 million tokens in the initial round um, and then we issue again um, 1 million tokens in the second round, um, then this would inflate your voting power and your uh, monetary value um, by 50%, um, which yeah. means that you not only have uh, buying anything, um, half the voting power and half the um, purchasing power. Um, so then if you have 2% of the initial um, uh, tokens, um, then you would get a stock option um, to purchase another 1% um, of those tokens. Um, In simple terms, the can be token is a different token from the actual token. So the ICO token, uh, if you run the ICO, the ICO itself is a, is, is a different digital contract altogether. In simple terms. If, if you want to have uh, a discount for uh, early uh, buyers uh, and uh, then go gradually raise the price. I mean, it's, you're talking about an individual, it's digital contract to itself. It's a crowd sale contract that you make on top. The crowd sales, uh, crowd sales should not be the, product itself okay and this this option token can this uh, be created uh, temporarily um, only for the duration of the fundraising of the further rounds yeah I mean if you talk to an ICO service they create an, a crowd sale token for you that uh, actually just represents the ICO. You can only use it with uh, the crowd sale. Now you have your own token uh, separately that the crowd sale awards to the investor. So for example, if, if you go through uh, uh, Bitcoin Swiss, they uh, and they run an ICO for you. They create an ICO, a crowd sale contract, uh, which the contract awards uh, whatever token you have created. But the crowd sale is not a part of your token. 
it's a different uh, um, different uh, uh, contract and uh, if it has tokens it, uh, the token is completely separated it just has rules uh, as uh, you described that uh, for example if you want to have a 50% initial, uh, disc initial discount for early um, buyers then cut the 30% 20% and so on it's not a part of uh, the actual uh, portfolio token and uh, okay yes you can, you, you can create a digital contract that self destructs uh, within uh, a block time how would that be useful <laughs> Um, I, th I think simply because the, the stock option is only viable for the duration of the uh, funding round. Um, so let's say if the second funding round takes place over the period of one month, um, the stock option can only be bought and sold um, beforehand. Um, so maybe the two or three months uh, before the actually month of the funding, um, you, can, uh, you can trade this token in advance. Um, and then during the one month uh, fundraising period, um, you can still trade the token if you do not want to have it, um, but you can also use the token um, to uh, purchase additional stocks. Um, so basically for the second and uh, following funding rounds, uh, in order to buy additional tokens, you need to have uh, the option token. And uh -huh. as soon as um, the tokens, I the have tokens are burned. I have the code for a crowd, basic crowd sale contract in front of me here right now. Let me turn on the camera. All right, can you guys see it? Okay, so this is like from the Ethereum's own website, Ethereum for Dummies. So uh, we are creating uh, a contract to deploy my token initial supply token name and the, the to token that you issue is just for the crowd sale it doesn't uh, crowd sale, uh, funding goal amount sale, beneficiary uh, fallback function. What happened? I think we might have lost Tom, at least I can't hear anything. That's after deadline. Um, and what Seems like there's a problem with the connection. Yeah, I turned the video off, but a crowd cell, a basic crowd cell contract does just that. It doesn't say anything about what your token does. Your, what, your, what your token does is up to you, but the crowd cell contract is, is different. That's just for the crowd sale. Okay, and then how could we link the um, option token uh, in that way that it gets uh, burned as soon as you uh, make the payment uh, for the uh, funding investment? Um, so let's say that Alice wants to invest, uh, she already has the um, option token and now she wants to invest in the uh, second uh, funding round. How can we uh, link it that she needs to sell um, some ether, so the actual uh, funding amount plus the option token um, in the uh, uh, reporting um, yeah, distribution. Can't um, we burn the token when it's sent back to the issuer? Yeah, um, but, but how do we link the, the burning of this token with the uh, funding? Um, 
is it possible to create a contract that both accepts the funding um, and accepts the uh, issue uh, the option token um, and then burns the option token uh, we can create a rule for that uh, because like um, there are um, there are tokens that burn even periodically but I mean yeah we can define any rules for burning the tokens um, for example when it's sent to a specific address like for the token issuer like our wallet uh, the issuer's wallet uh, then uh, we can define a rule that okay the option token is burned out of the market so it can't be traded anymore uh, but if we want to burn it out of the market uh, in any case I don't think that's that's a problem if, if the token is sent uh, then we just uh, burn it basically okay and can this be made in the uh, same transaction or in the same contract um, that uh, accepts the the amount of ether in, in the funding you know what I mean please explain um, so in order to participate in the second and following funding rounds, you need to have uh, the corresponding amount of option tokens um, that gives you the right um, to participate in the funding. Um, you, yeah. Um, and the question is, can we do the same contract um, or the same address um, that both, uh, which is essentially the same, um, that both accept the ether uh, that is given uh, to the project uh, as the funding um, in return for the um, equity token that is issued. Um, but the same contract also uh, accepts the uh, um, option token, um, which is then uh, burned, so it cannot be used again. Um, okay. We have to keep things really simple here. Are we talking about the same crowd sale contract, which goes in steps? Or are we talking about a rolling crowd sale contract, where you can issue an option token at will, even after the initial crowd sale is done? I think that's that sounds about right. If it's possible at all to do, that would be great. If we could just uh, stop. Put up, put it on a, on a stop, and then continue once we have another project. And it will be a, it will be an, an ongoing uh, crowd sale, basically until the end of the project, which is not set, of course. Because there, I, I I assume that if if it takes off, if the project takes off, there will be many many projects that we're going to fund with this. So it will be a hassle to keep off. Uh, crowd sale for each each project separate so, so how these tokens work uh, essentially is that every token has a, a, a maximum amount uh, or a, an amount a set amount that is released into the market let's say that we have a hundred million tokens so if we want to sell um, our tokens, like if we want to sell, like uh, let's make an assumption: we sell uh, 30 million in the first crowd sale, and then we have uh, 30 million in a bank that is funding the actual future projects. At some point, we will run out of tokens. Okay, uh, we can issue new tokens that represent these um, infungible assets. 
that we can do. But the portfolio token itself is like issuing stock for a company. Okay. Um, when a comp when you issue uh, um, okay, a company can probably issue more stock, but that would depreciate the value. Now with Ethereum um, you have to, uh, you have to um, issue the maximum amount of tokens um, uh, defined in the um, um, in the contract uh, that that governs the token. Okay, so, so and what we can quick question is it's, can do it's, it's not possible to actually issue a, a contract that has. Uh, the potential of issuing unlimited amounts of tokens? Um, there should be a cap. I haven't heard of any um, token that is issued on a platform like Ethereum that wouldn't have a cap. Um, the cap, uh, cap is going to provide a significant problem with scaling, because if we have the more pro projects we have, then we're going to run out of tokens and then we have to launch another one. So I, I think we should have no cap. And I think it won't be a problem because um, we will be raising these mini ICOs for each project that is actually getting built. So then uh, the tokens will always be backed up by the value of the network, which is a, a real thing, a real world thing that is actually pro producing value. And it, whenever there's more tokens, there will be a new power plant backing up those new tokens. Uh, so that's basically where the, where the so-called intrins intrinsic value comes from. Yeah, so the, okay. the token is, is scarce um, at every time. So there, there's never an unlimited amount of tokens in the market. Um, and we have to reach consensus somehow over a voting system, which we can talk about later, um, to increase the available amounts of tokens. Um, and this consensus will be reached every time that a new project is, is being built. Um, so at all times, we have a limited amount of tokens, but this limit needs to be put higher and higher um, with each new project that we decide to build. I have found um, a function that can probably do it. Okay, so look for central mint. Uh, it defines uh, total supply and initial supply. So uh, if we define total supply as minted amount, uh, we can probably mint more of it. Um, Suppose you want the amount of coins in circulation to change. This is the case when your tokens actually represent an off-blockchain asset like gold certificates or government currencies, and you want the virtual inventory to reflect the real one. This might also be the case when the currency holders expect some control of the price of the token and want to issue or remove tokens from circulation. So first we need to add a variable to store the total supply and assign it to our constructor function. Now we have to add a new function that finally will enable the owner to create new tokens, function mint token. And only owner can mint them if we want, the on, only the owner to mint them, of course. Uh, and um, this means that this function will be rewritten at compilation to inherit the code from the modifier only owner that we had defined before. Okay, so as central mint, you need to add the variable total supply and then we assign it to a constructor function. Now we have to add a new function finally that will enable the owner to create new tokens. And the owner will create new tokens according to minted amount, but you need to be the contr uh, contract owner, i.e. us, 
that will be able to create more coins. So, um, okay, good point. We can we more this trustless um, so that we cannot issue new to new coins until consensus is reached. Um, can this change in the code be uh, implemented only with uh, uh, a vast amount of consensus? Well, we need to write that, of course, in code if we want to vote on it. Okay. Yeah, but but if that's possible, that's great. Because the contract owner, it doesn't need to be a human, it can be a machine. But of course, we are talking about a token and not a cryptocurrency, therefore there is at least one uh, central point of failure anyway, which is the code uh, and the creator. So, I mean, we can yeah, implement definitely. consensus mechanism. Yeah, yeah. so this, this is not going to be 100% decentralized coin. Uh, that's, I think, impossible uh, at this stage. Um, maybe later and we'll strive to be as decentralized as possible. Um, but definitely, this is backed by a real project that has real value and uh, actually real human have to um, have to do that. So some uh, authority is um, unfortunately needed and required. Um, so that is definitely true. But we have to make sure that this uh, power of the authority um, is limited um, so that no arbitrary changes uh, in the code can be made uh, without the consent of, of the vast majority uh, of participants and token holders. Uh, of course not, uh, that would uh, of course leave a mark, um, I mean if somebody, um, let's say, uh, um, hacks our, uh, our um, uh, contract and becomes the contract owner, okay, Be uh, so somebody uh, um, obtains the keys that cover uh, the, the minting uh, of new coins, then um, it would instantly show on the network, okay, somebody has minted some extra coins. Why did this happen? Um, so um, I don't think that that would be anybody's incentive uh, even because, um, we could simply uh, freeze those assets, which... I think we lost you again. Um, that's a good point, though, that it, uh, uh, of course, it shows on the, on the blockchain and the network. Um, and it's also interesting how we can do this uh, in a secure way. Um, so using multi-signature um, and uh, block time locks um, to uh, make this as, as secure it, as it's possible. Just start Somebody becomes the contract owner, manages to, by taking over um, the wallet that governs it, okay, issue new coins. So what we can do is, we can just do uh, a hard fork or we can include a function that freezes those uh, uh, hacker-created coins. So it would uh, not be uh, financially viable like it would not be a financial incentive to do that maybe just for the lulls just to uh, uh, try to ridicule us like, but uh, so if, if we do the hard fork after a successful uh, rubber if we do the hard fork after the hack will there be uh, annex classic and uh, annex normal <laughs> <laughs> We, we would um, simply uh, reward uh, uh, the, we would simply force everybody to go on the new network, but of course they could, the minority could create an NX classic if they wanted to, if, if it's open source, but they could, yeah, but we could, uh, there's a freezing of assets available, okay? Um, that, so we can, uh, if uh, certain conditions are not met, 
then we can uh, have an account frozen or some assets frozen. So yeah. um, and, and we can do multi signatures for the uh, creation of the tokens, right? Yeah, because we are talking about contract security and we are talking about yeah. um, uh, the security involved in issuing the funds. So uh, we have a central point of failure somewhere anyway, uh, but we want to reduce the financial incentive uh, for somebody to hack us as much as possible. Uh, so um, that's why actually I, I think that your proposal about uh, making the contract owner as decentralized as possible would be better. Uh, so that uh, there would not be uh, a bank to rob, so to speak. Yes, yes, I agree. And the thing is that we will not issue any coins um, on a short notice. Um, so this will take a lot of time uh, and we can plan this far ahead. Um, so we uh, could also put a, a month long uh, and lock time in there um, just to make sure that if the coins are created, uh, um, falsely, uh, we can take actions. Yes, because the whole point is uh, uh, to crowd sale uh, a real world asset through a, a, a decent, decentralized uh, 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 contract. So we sort of uh, take the single point of failure away as much as possible. But yes, and uh, Alexis just put in uh, a link to, to the uh, GitHub of Open Zeppelin, uh, where there, there are some security audited uh, contracts for token creation, uh, which yeah. is really uh, useful. Um, I think we can use them. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, no, we're, you guys can look into it and, and which contract is uh, the most secure and the most useful. Uh, so that's definitely, that's definitely valuable. Thank you. Yeah, we, we kind of lean on your expertise here. We, 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 have, we provide a kind of the vision and we need you to execute it. And of course, if you have any ideas or, or, or if some of the ideas that we've had or thought are hard to implement or impossible then you know you can come up with a better proposal but this is what we've been talking about this is what we've uh, we've agreed so far at least is the consensus that we should have a kind of like roll, rolling uh, crowdfunding uh, mini ico platform and then a utility token which can be a separate token or if it's possible it could be the same one but uh, that's in the uh, far off future, I think. Not that far, but uh, certainly not not at the launch. Yes, um, and and to bring this whole conversation back to the white paper, um, uh, I think it's uh, this is a big big topic that we should cover. Um, the several funding rounds and and how they will be implemented, both from an economic side, uh, so that we uh, take care of the inflation and and the incentives. Um, but then also from the technical side, um, I can gladly write this part of the white paper, um, though explaining the uh, uh, funding uh, rounds and, and how this will work out. Um, but again, uh, I'm not the technical guy, uh, so uh, we need someone else to handle the, um, uh, the technical aspect. Yeah, that's right. Um, can you guys see the the Google Doc? Yeah. Yep. Uh, this is this is the original rough structure for for the white paper. I think we can start from here um, to think about the structure and what to what should we change or what should we add. Yeah, I. Uh, um, 
the, the point that we just talked about could, uh, or th I think should be under point number five, uh, the token structure. Right. Um, so that is, uh, I think, a separate point uh, that would be point D, uh, Dora, in this regard, um, uh, funding rounds and uh, um, option uh, or uh, token option. Uh, and we have to have a portfolio token and we have to have a token that represents the individual real world assets separately and then uh, we need to have on top of the portfolio we need to have a, a purchasing option contract i'm not sure if we want to make a, a separate token about that but as discussed we were we were doing that so uh this trade is a token uh, that can be exchanged so somebody can sell the options as well yeah so there would be three tokens the actual portfolio the option to the portfolio and then the assets within the portfolio would you create a separate token for the assets and uh, for what would we use that because um, if we already have the portfolio token um, then uh, yeah, why would we need to have a token for each project separately yes because the assets they are infungible uh, the asset uh, represents a solar installation a power plant so for example when somebody wants to build uh, a power plant that composes of a certain amount of uh, megawatts of, of power, it's within a certain location. So it's an immovable asset. So there is an infungible token standard for that, mm -hmm. which is ERC-725, uh, which represents a token that can be bought and sold Yes, yeah, so I, I, I agree on the... Uh, to yes, I, I agree on the technical side. However, um, if, if, the, uh, if we have the portfolio aspect, then the value of each power plant will be um, represented in the entire portfolio token uh, portion. Of and now if you create a separate asset token, um, is this only used as yeah, a... Yeah, that's that actually value. Uh, do you know what I mean? What matters here is that with the same logic that a, power, a complete power plant is not infungible. Um, let me just... It's self sovereign identity standard for Ethereum. Okay, um, but again, if if the if each project is represented by the portfolio token uh, proportionally, um, based on the amount of, of uh, kilowatt power that is produced by each project, um, then if we create the separate asset token uh, that is then traded on the market, uh, which then gives it value. Uh, your, your microphone is bad right now. And simple atomic swaps. So, uh, ERC721 and I didn't mix it with the whole time. Then I don't, okay, non fungible token standard. Many have heard of the new game on the Ethereum blockchain called CryptoKitties. The new game recently made several headlines within the community because of its extremely unique idea and the dent it's made on the network. The game 
is uh, where people can buy, sell, trade, and bring digital cards, like uh, cards. Okay, so they are collectibles, and uh, we can emulate them with Ethereum tokens. Uh, these uh, tokens from a novel standard in the Ethereum community known as ERC721, not 725, which is the ID, the identity. Okay. So it's an improvement proposal introduced by Dieter Shirley in late 2017. It's a proposed standard that would allow smart contracts to operate as tradable tokens similar to ERC20. Uh, the tokens are unique in that the tokens are non-fungible. Fungible being something such as money or commodity uh, of such a nature that one part of quantity may be replaced by another equal part of quantity in paying debt or settling an amount. Fung fungibility is a char characteristic of an asset or token in this case that determines whether items or quantities are of the same or similar type and they can be completely interchangeable. Now, if we have uh, a, a power plant in uh, Germany and a power plant in Finland, those are not completely interchangeable. And that's why we need an infungible token that has some sort of identity to itself. Okay. Uh, so the contract uh, ERC721, it has name, symbol, uh, constant uh, returns, define ownership, uh, address owner, token ID, uh, and uh, events. And ERC20 like functions, name symbol, total supply, balance of, and ownership functions, owner of, accrual, take ownership, transfer, uh, owner by index, uh, metadata. Uh, option events transfer approval uh, and that's it. it it just adds functions uh, on top of it being uh, a unit of currency so you can give it a name so that that's what it does and yeah but, but what would we, what we use this naming um, account because from the uh, from the economic point of view, we want to have the representation of the value in the portfolio token, which is fungible. Um, and then if we use the non-fungible token, um, what would that do exactly? ERC-725, because I've been talking about ERC-721 as ERC. It's a standard so that other contracts can interact with real-world identities, automatically check and verify them. So. Uh, currently, everybody collects all information about you separately to make sure they know who you are, e.g. E banks, credit services, or any service that needs to have know your customer. A standard uh, like VCRC725 will help insofar that everybody can auto-check certain claims and therefore don't need to store actual details about you anymore as long as they can trust the claim issuer. Uh, um, that they have the actual information. So uh, the current over collecting of information about people is because of a lack of a better system. So that's ERC 725 and ERC 721 is that you define that the contract has an owner. ERC 725 defines the owner. Okay. Okay. So those are improvements on the ERC-20 token standard that add more uh, depth to what Ethereum can do, apart from just issuing tokens that can be exchanged as currency. And here we have the, the, the proposal on, uh, on, on GitHub also. Uh, I have to link it somewhere. I'll link it to Telegram.
So uh, can we get back to the, the white paper? Yeah. So then we're talking about token structure here, right? Yeah. So do you feel, Tom, that this is something, this is a section that you could uh, take charge of? And then, of course, you can ask help from anybody uh, on the parts that you need. But would you like to take the lead on that? Um, yes, and we need to define, uh, of course, uh, the um, portfolio token. That's why I was saying that the portfolio token has to be defined separately because that's currency. And then we have the individual projects. Now, the individual projects, uh, they have to be defi defined in, in, in broader terms than just the assets so you have to uh, give it a name and owner and you have to give the owner on an identity so yeah definitely and if there is something that i find technically difficult of course i will seek for advice and help from the community that's, that's, that's right. good. Um, quality of the work to be good. So it's just not, I'm, I'm not claiming that uh, uh, I'm an expert in everything, uh, on the contrary. No, that's cool. Uh, Alex, do you want to also uh, work on the point four or maybe three? Yeah. I can help with that. Um, so the, if the actual platform is going to be like a, the app where you can then select uh, in which you want to invest each project. Is that the um, idea of the actual platform then or, or where you log in and everything? You're talking about the pipeline? Yeah. Yeah, uh, the idea is that the pipeline can be a web or, uh, or wallet interface that, that is filled with pre-approved projects by the team. And then from those, the token holders get to vote, the stakers get to vote um, which projects to fund next. That's okay. the basic idea. So that will be a part of the token structure and functionality. Actually, yeah, it's mentioned here at the voting. Okay, what else? Do you guys see something that is missing or something that is extra? Imagine somebody is having an ICO just for a token that is an option for another token. <laughs> I'm Googling. Yeah, that sounds Nothing. pretty funny. Uh, Option token decentralized investment fund. That's somebody else's ICO. I think we have the, the specifics set, the, the basics. Yeah, I think um, if, if you guys don't have anything to add here, we can, we can go ahead and start working on this document. I'll just share this for everybody. I made a copy of the old rush structure and I named it, renamed it to an XLR white paper 1.0. I'll be distributing the editing rights for everybody. And then I guess we'll just start working on it and commenting on it. And then when the time feels right, we'll have another, another get together, maybe in a week or two, uh, depending on uh, how we can get the work done. What do you guys think? Yes, yes, yes but uh, let's also define, uh, who will uh, keep working on what. Um, so as I said earlier, I'll, I'll write the uh, funding rounds and the economics behind that um, with the okay. token. 
options, uh, at least for the uh, next week. Um, the Tom and Alexi uh, will work on the uh, token structure from a uh, technical point of view. Um, so how those tokens will be uh, done uh, um, on the technical side, uh, the standards and code is going to be used. Uh, Nico, do you have something that you want to focus on for the next week or so? Yeah, I think I think I can. Um, I've been uh, toying with a lot of lot of ideas and theories about the voting mechanism and, and sparking up and fizzling down. So maybe I'll take that. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah. I mean, you you came up with the sparking method, uh, so I think you're the best man to do that. Thanks. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, Felix, are you still there? Yes, I'm there. Um, do you have time this week to uh, to start writing, uh, or uh, are you going to focus on uh, just contributing on, on several topics? Can you focus on? I I don't have much time this week, but I think I I I can contribute with a few things. But but not the technical parts. I, I'm not into it. <laughs> yeah, definitely no issue. No, that's needed. Okay. And also the yeah, I think I can work on the introduction and the the number two, one and two basically because I I have pretty uh, general grasp of the, what we're doing here. So at least I can try to write up an outline and you guys can just feel free to add anything there. Yes, yes. Awesome. Oh, um, I, th I think one point to add here is the open source um, project or organization. Um, I think that is a, uh, that's an important part of what we're doing. That's a good point. Yeah, we want that, that to be one of the first things that, that people pay attention to. And yeah, and actually that's uh, that's one of the things that I've got the most positive feedback about of us being open source, which is apparently something that is not done um, in, in a large scale yet. So I think that's something we want to hold on to definitely. And it's, it's, it's been a great asset. Like we, we've already recruited people based on based on being open source like tom for example is here for that so that's uh it's pretty cool and uh, as you said i think this is the most important part we can do um solar energy is nothing new um investment funds are nothing new um and i think the biggest value that we can provide uh, is trying to change how uh, we organize ourselves in society um, and uh, having a more um or a less hierarchical structure and more of a vertical uh, structure. Um, which is, I, think, where to go. Um, I think this is the way that uh, that Bitcoin will will, will eventually lead. Um, not just talking about the currency, but the entire ecosystem. Um, and I think, yeah, that's that's the most inter interesting part we can work on: uh, organizational structure. Yeah, definitely agreed. And it's anarchy. And I mean, who doesn't like anarchy? Yeah, of course. That's why we are here. Okay. So, any feedback uh, so far? Uh, anything you still want to talk about? Nope. Where do you live, Tom? Maybe we should meet and discuss the technical things together. You mean in Helsinki? Yeah, it's possible for you. Anytime you like. Yeah, okay. So maybe next week on day. Okay, let's just agree on the time and place. Yeah, I'll write you a message. Okay. That's cool, I might join you guys. I th unfortunately, I don't have time to fly to Helsinki, but... <laughs> Lovely to hear the uh, yeah, the summary of your of what you talked about. Perfect. All right, great. 
Helsinki is a pretty cool place currently, literally. We have about uh, minus 10 Celsius, minus 20 in the night and a meter. Yeah, it's very warm. <laughs> yeah, I was actually freezing in my bed <laughs> last night. Oh, no. Times, times like this uh, makes me question why, why do I live, why do we live here? <laughs> Well, well, good that you weren't at Acapulco, because uh, that would be... <laughs> yeah, it will be, it will be, I agree. <laughs> All right, guys, it was a good one, thank you. I'll upload the video as soon as I, I get around to it. Awesome. Yeah, perfect. Um, thank you guys for joining. Uh, I agree this was a productive meeting, um, and uh, now let's execute. Uh, let's uh, see that we can uh, have some pages written out. It uh, doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, doesn't need to be the final version. Um, just uh, write your part down. Um, write as much as you can, and uh, give feedback. Uh, that is always important, um, not just on your own work, but also on the work of others. Um, and yeah, then let's have a, a meeting someone next week to discuss the project, uh, the progress we made. Um, and other than that, keep up to date. Uh, do your research and have fun working. Always a good point. Fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's do that. I was planning we can we can have like a peer review round with the with the community as well. Uh once we reach the kind of point that we have something to present. So that'll be something fun to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, and then one more thing. Um as as with everything, uh work in the Google uh drive. Um and make sure that all the documents you work on are shared with everyone. Um, simply that everyone can get feedback as uh, fast as possible or as soon as possible. Um, and use the comment section uh, and the, the editing section uh, so that it is uh, nice and uh, organized. Um, but other than that, I'm working. Great. Talk to you guys later. Great. See you guys. See ya. Yeah, thanks for meeting. Thanks.